Okay, hello, this is Dr. Janes, and today I'm going to talk a little bit more about this circuit. It's a cheap little RF circuit, self-oscillating. You put an inductor on, what is it, this side? No, it's the bottom side, I guess, the bottom, right here. And uh, I uh, did a reverse engineering of the circuit, and uh, I'm going to show how you can tune this circuit by putting different inductors on this. So we'll do some testing with that. It should be interesting. And these circuits are pretty cheap. You get them on Amazon for, um, oh, I forget. Some places sell it for more. Some places sell it for less than $20, I think. I'll post some links. Def definitely, if you want to order some of these and do some experiments, order them through my links because that uh, helps support my channel and then I can bring more content to you. Anyway, very cool, very cool circuit. And uh, let's get started. Okay, hello, this is Dr. Janes, and today I'm going to talk about tuning uh, this RF induction heater. I did a reverse engineering video of it the other day, and I'm going to use some of these cores that I showed how to make them variable inductors with to uh, tune the resonant frequency of uh, this nifty little guy right here. Let's see if we can get him in the frame. Okay, there, that guy. Uh, this guy sells for less than $50, and very high power device, very cool, huh? So, uh, we'll be tuning this guy with these little ferrite cores, and, and uh, seeing what the tuning range is, and let's get started. Okay, so I hooked up a um, smaller high inductance coil on the output, which remember, uh, when I was doing the... Uh, reverse engineering of this guy is just uh, in, sh in parallel with these two capacitors here and uh, I have a scope measurement here now of that frequency which is around 116 kilohertz okay. and maybe I'll fiddle with this maybe I'll try putting um, some uh, inductors or uh, ferrite cores in the middle of that and see if we can change the frequency. Oh, and this time I changed how I was coupling to it because it wasn't getting, getting a good coupling with just putting one probe on there. The voltage is a lot lower at this higher frequency. So I turned the scope probe into a loop and I just put it around this guy so it was like a transformer. And uh, then I didn't have to worry about blowing out the scope either if it's only inductively coupled like that. And I was able to put it on a scale so I could uh, measure that without worrying about blowing out the probe or the scope. Channel 1, right? Okay, and as I've learned the hard way with these batteries, you want to make sure that I don't have any protection on them. So you want to make sure that the voltage doesn't drop much below, like, I don't know, probably 3.5 volts or something. When it starts to drop low, it drops very fast, and uh, then it will destroy the battery. And so it looks like uh, just by running these for a little bit, the voltage has already dropped quite a bit. And to check each of the cells, because what will happen is if you, you have a bunch in series like this and one of them drops low, all the other batteries will reverse charge it and it will be destroyed in no time. Okay. okay, so I have this ferrite core that I used in making uh, my video for the uh, variable inductor, 3D printed, and you can see that video on my website or on my YouTube channel and um, I'll probably put a link to that also a link to these cores you can buy different size cores I just I got some big ones before and I did some videos on that and I have this is a smaller one let's let's just test this out if I insert this into the coil well will the uh, device is running I, I can't run this for too long because the wires actually get hot it is drawing a whole lot of power Hooked up right. Hmm. 
I'm oscillating every time for some reason. Wow, the wires are getting hot. Okay, there we go. Let me fiddle with this for a second. Okay, there it's oscillating. And let me put the core down inside of there. Okay, so it's oscillating. I think it stopped oscillating. Hmm. Okay, so the batteries are getting warm and uh, they're getting a little bit depleted. They're down to about 3.8 volts and I don't want to destroy them. So I'm going to change the batteries out. I can only charge two at a time. But um, we'll get these charged up and I'll put some new ones in. And uh, we'll continue our experiment. Should be interesting. Okay. okay, so we got some new batteries in there. Let's uh, get this thing going. too long. Let me just, uh, I guess, try to get a frequency measurement here. Okay. And then I'll put the core in here. It's about 120, 118 kilohertz. And I'll put the core in. See if we get this thing to oscillate. It seems, it seems to be a lot higher Q. I don't know if these batteries, maybe these batteries are uh, not behaving well under the high power. Okay, so the core didn't seem to shift the frequency that much, but it did change the Q a lot. It seems these wires are getting hot. having some issues oscillating. If I put a regular car battery on there it would be better. They're pretty heavy. These wires are getting hot. It's drawing a lot of current. kilohertz and let's put our core back in there that looks like it shifted the frequency a little bit it's about 110 kilohertz now it was about 120 before let me put some more cores in there and see what happens Okay, so there, now I have two cores in there, inside of the coil, and we'll see what the frequency is now. Okay, looks like it is approximately 107 now. Seven kilohertz now. Okay. Try three, I guess. Try to keep on tuning this thing. Okay, so now I have three of those cores in there. And um, let's try this again. Oh, this box is getting in the way. Move this over some. There's one cursor. So about 107 still. 
Okay, so it seems like it's pulling it down a little bit, but let me, let me put a few more cores in there and see what happens. Okay, so there, now I have about five cores in there. And again, I'm just tapping this guy because I am worried about... Okay. Worried about burning out those batteries or something else. Okay. And so with the five cores, we've tuned it down to about 99 kilohertz. And it looks like the Q is getting bigger also at the lower frequencies. So, it definitely wants to run at a lower frequency. Check the fats and stuff, make sure they're not getting hot. Okay, so again, let's pull these guys out. There's five cores there. And we will run this guy again quickly. It seems to not want to resonate so well at these higher frequencies, but there we go. Okay, so 120 kilohertz. 121. More than that, 124. Looks like that's about peak to peak. 124. So, there we are. Tuning our uh, RF induction circuit. That's a little cheap one. And I'll provide links to these. and. Again, if you order them through my links, it helps out my website so I can make more great videos. So I uh, take the whatever I uh, earn off of this website and I pretty much dump it back in so I can keep on making more and more videos. So if you like the videos, definitely subscribe and share share the videos and uh, order th order through my links. Okay, so here's the coil that I'm using. Let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, about five or six turns. How do you count it? Or I guess that'd be about five turns, right? Five or six. About one inch in diameter and about one inch in length. And, uh, let's see. How this, well, I forget, but it's a pretty high gauge coil. I forget what it is now. Anyway. So, simple little coil. We'll just do some testing with it. Should be interesting. Okay, okay, so let's take a measurement of this, uh, the inductance of this coil. And it looks like it's about oh, between 0.6 and 0.4 microhenries. Okay, so let's do some calculations and remember with some issue with the. Uh, what the capacitance really was in our circuit. Actually, our circuit's right here, right? Because it was labeled as 0.3 microfarads, and uh, but I was measuring much higher, but I suspect I was measuring higher because it was in, well, in parallel with an inductor, so that was probably messing up the measurement because this thing assumes just a capacitor in the circuit. So, let me, uh, uh, do some calculations here and see what we get. Okay, so remember our circuit was resonating at about uh, 120 kilohertz, which is about 0.12 megahertz, according to my estimations, because they want this to be in megahertz, and about 0.4 microhenries, or uh, yeah, which is about 400 nanohenries. And uh, so let's do the calculations. And so, <clears throat> wow, 4.4 picofarads, 4.4 e to the 6, which would be 4.4 uh, e to the 3 nanofarads, or, uh, yeah, 4.4 microfarads, which I think was a little bit higher than uh, what, what the capacitors were labeled as far as I could read. So each capacitor was about two microfarads. Am I doing the calculations right? I think I am. 0.12, that's 120 kilohertz. Uh, 0.4 microhenries. Anyway, for what it's worth, maybe this is the value, the correct value of the capacitors. Another way of measuring it. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about it. See, uh, there's definitely some kind of error someplace, but um, 
I think this is probably about ballpark, though. I think there's a lot of air in the, uh, since this was varying between, um, let's try be, between uh, 0.4 and 0.6. Let's see what 0.6 gives us. Okay. Okay, so that's closer to uh, 2 microfarads then. Is that right? Picofarads, th 10 to the 3 is nanofarads, 10 to the 3 is uh, micro microfarads, right? Nanos nine is minus 9, picos minus 12. Uh, I think that's right. Minus 12 plus minus 6 is 2.9 micro microfarads. Okay. Well, okay, so maybe that's what it is. We'll have to see. I appreciate it. Thank you. This is Dr. James, and thanks for watching.